question of the day. All right. Well, this is, this is going to be interesting. I've asked this before, but it's been a long time. For these running shoe... Here we go, here we go, Sockety Triumph 18 into the studio, first impression run. And yesterday's vlog, remember I talked to you about the chapters that I can create within the video? They worked. So the time codes for the different components of my breakdown of the Triumph 18 are listed down below in the description. For example, if you want to jump to when I just talk about the price point, it's down below. Uh, my, my first score, not my final score. Oh yeah, that's another point. I am going to start to roll out in this vlog my scoring system a little more clearly just so everyone can see it on the screen, probably in titles, okay? So if you want to learn about uh, what my thoughts are for the first score for the Triumph 18, again, it is listed it down below in the description. All right, let's dive into it. A neutral, very plush road running shoe, okay? And we're looking at a 33 stack height in the heel, 25 in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop in the Triumph 18. Sorry, ladies, couldn't find the weight. Uh, I don't know what's gonna have to happen long term, but I couldn't find a women's size eight. So that's the standard sizing used for weight uh, on all the websites out there when you're researching shoes. I couldn't find one. So sorry, ladies, but for men's size nine, we're looking at 11.1 ounces or 314 grams. And in my size, I have not weighed it yet. So you're getting my gut reaction right now. 10.6 ounces, 10.6, oh man, 300 and two grams in my size. And so the score for the weight of the Triumph 18, five out of 10, five out of 10 for the weight of the Triumph 18. And you know what? I cannot resist comparing the Triumph 18 to the Endorphin Shift. I gave my full review of the Endorphin Shift yesterday, the 50 mile review, upper right hand corner, in case you haven't seen that. I know it's lighter, but I, I think it was 9.9. Yup, 9.9, 10.6, 9.9, 10.6 ounces in my size. Okay, let's move on to the upper of the Triumph 18. It's a Jacquard mesh upper. I'm gonna say not as breathable as the Endorphin Shift down here on the shelf. Not even sure if you can see that over there. Um, and by the way, we've got the Ride 13, the Triumph 18, the Endorphin Speed, and the Endorphin Shift. Saucony is having quite a summer, quite a summer, Saucony. I must say, tip of the cap, you're doing good. Um, but okay, so the mesh upper here is not as breathable as the endorphin shift. A lot of overlay happening, and I'm just gonna like, it's, it's. I should put this in, in, in bold, capitalized letters, plush, plush, plush upper. The tongue, the heel collar, even, I know this is this is silly, but even the, the shoelaces, they're thick. They're not, they're, it's, it's crazy, but some shoes, yes, have thick shoelaces as well. Soft, very, very comfortable, comfortable upper. And a very stout, okay, stout heel counter, very much so, like I can't even bend that at all. And it is a semi-gusseted tongue as well for the lockdown with that plush uh, tongue. 8 out of 10. Very, very good lockdown feel, like the laces combined with the tongue, uh, working with the outer wall of the upper. Awesome. Felt very, very locked down in the first impression run today. And last but not least on the upper, they added this year from the Triumph 17, a little more reinforcement here through the uh, toe box right on the side, what would be considered the vamp of the shoe and just to help reinforce that toe box a little bit. So some added stability, uh, just so again, you feel really locked into the shoe 
overall score for the upper thus far, I'm going to go 7 out of 10. All right. Even though the lockdown was an 8 out of 10, the overall upper score, we're going 7 out of 10. Time out, time out. Almost forgot. Do not wear slick socks with the Triumph 18. The inner lining of the Triumph 18 is a little slick. Similar to the Brooks, where is it? It's not, I don't know if it's out here, the Brooks Ghost lineup. It's just a slick feel. Um, and when you have slicker socks that don't have as much friction, you can just slide around just a little bit. So watch that in the Triumph 18. And onto that midsole, the heart of the shoe, we're looking at a Power Run Plus TPU midsole, the same midsole material used in the Triumph 17. And this Power Run Plus midsole foam is 27, 28% lighter than the ever run midsole foam. So that is a good sign. Uh, innovation happening in the Saucony lineup. Now for my score of the feel and the ride of the Triumph 18 is going to be a 6 out of 10. Not as responsive as I was expecting, okay? Compared to, you know, even the Ride 13, which is quite a bit lighter than the uh, Triumph 18, I was expecting a little more. So that's the Power Run midsole foam. This is the Power Run Plus midsole foam. I didn't, and again, just my first run. Um, I'll keep testing it, but I was expecting a little more spring. That's why the score is a little lower at six out of 10. Now, as far as the stability of the ride of this midsole, I felt great actually, even though it's, you know, it's higher, it definitely falls into the high category. 33 and 25, not maximalist, but high. Um, but that contour bed inside the footbed there, inside the shoe, it just acts as a cradle for your foot. And I felt very, very, so if you like a shoe that um, has a little more uh, stack height protection for your legs, but does, but still feels stable and not unstable, like I'm thinking even the endorphin shift, I felt unstable early on testing that shoe out. That was not the case in the Triumph 8. And onto the bottom of the shoe, the outsole, we've got a lot of blown rubber here versus crystal rubber in the Triumph 17. And this blown rubber is softer, absolutely. So under the foot strike, it doesn't feel as hard on the pavement, which I like. Also, there's a decoupled groove. I love a decoupled groove on the bottom of shoes like the Pegasus 37. I love that decoupled groove. Also, the Glide Ride, two shoes that jump out at me. I think even, yeah, the Nova Blast, I do believe. So I love a decoupled groove, which is basically a little uh, in, inset of the midsole rubber um, or sorry, the midsole foam. And it just, it's almost like a little canyon there through the bottom of the shoe. I think it acts a little bit like a trampoline underfoot. I like it. It gives it a little more bounce and yes, reduces the weight of the shoe just a little bit. So overall, uh, pleased with the outsole, but the reason the score of the outsole is not going to be great is because I, of course, think there's just too much rubber. I think it increases the weight of the shoe, so we're going to go with another six and a half out of ten. For the fit, went true to size. I'm going to go with seven out of ten on the fit only because of the toe box felt just a little wide for me, okay? If you have a wider forefoot, this probably is gonna work out really, really well, uh, but that is why the score is not a little higher for the fit. So seven out of 10 there. And for my comfort, we are going eight out of 10, 100%. Think of, imagine when you go camping and you have your sleeping bag and you need to stuff it into the sack once you're going home after the camping trip. That is what they did for the Triumph 18 upper. They just kept stuffing, stuffing into the uh, upper of this Triumph 18, like the tongue, the heel counter, the heel collar, the heel tab, uh, the, 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 the laces. It's like, it is a very, very, very comfortable, comfortable shoe, which of course, increases the weight of the shoe quite significantly. That's why, what did I go with? A five out of 10 on the weight scale, uh, but then also combined with the midsole, the Power Run Plus midsole, durometer test, it's good, very soft landing. Um, so anyway, that's why we're going eight out of 10 for the comfort. For my positive and drawback, positive is the footbed. I love the feel of the contoured footbed inside the shoe. I feel cradled. It's like sitting in a hammock. All right, back to a camping. If you go camping and you bring a hammock, you just lay in the hammock and it just kind of wraps around you. That's the feel that I get inside the footbed of this Triumph 18. My drawback is heavy, 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 heavy. That is my drawback, of course. Now, durability prediction, seven, I'm going same as the endorphin shift, okay? 700 miles in this guy, 700 miles in this guy. Uh, mostly, well, because uh, I think the 
I think there will be a lot of resilience through the midsole. The upper, the upper, I think could be, I think it could be a, at least a thousand, at least a thousand. Like this upper is a pretty stout, well-built upper, but the amount of outsole rubber on this Triumph 18 is why I'm going with 700 plus miles for my durability prediction, which gives it a score of 8.5 out of 10. If you want to buy one shoe, um, and yes, let's dive into it. How will I use this shoe moving forward? Most likely an easy day or daily trainer shoe. Who is this shoe best for? If you love a plush, plush, plush shoe, and you only want to buy one shoe for, it could be, I don't know, it could be almost six months. You know, you just want one shoe and you don't mind the weight and you just want to get out there and put miles in every single day as a daily trainer uh, and just get it done and not have to worry about buying a bunch of different, now this is not a tempo day shoe. Um, could you pull off a long run, a long run, of course, but your legs might be a little more tired at the end because of that weight. Uh, but again, very, very stout, will last you a long, long time, absolutely. And onto that price point, $150, mm, I don't like it. Ah, uh, now, of course, their argument is gonna be, well, Seth, you just said this shoe is gonna go to 700 uh, plus miles or 1,000 miles for the upper, so I get, so $150, my score is gonna be a four out of 10 for the price point. I just think that that's too much, I think, Oh man, but I get it. Like they really put a lot of material into this shoe. I'd prefer to see that at that 130, 135 price point. So 150, oh man, it's uh, it, that's a tough one for me to accept. But so I, that's why I'm gonna drop my my price score down to four out of 10. And last but not least, on to my early score for the Triumph 18, not my final score, early score, 6.65 out of 10, 6.65, so not very good, Only mostly because of the weight, the price point, uh, yeah, the weight and the price point really kind of skewed the average down for the Triumph 18. There you go, thanks for watching, question of the day, all right, well, this is, this is going to be interesting. I've asked this before, but it's been a long time. For these running shoe first impression blogs and reviews, how can I bring you more value? So what do you want me to talk about for every single shoe? I think I have a pretty comprehensive analysis of running shoes. Oh my goodness, all the different factors. I won't go over them now. But if you can think of one, that I am like, just is not on my radar. Let me know down in the comments what uh, fat, what uh, component of a running shoe or result of, a, of an experience in a running shoe, <coughs> excuse me, would you like me to talk about here in the studios? <coughs> excuse me. That's the question of the day. Thanks, Abiter. Thanks for watching. Onward and upward. We're gonna toss it back in case you missed yesterday's Saucony Endorphin Shift full review. It'll be right there, right there. Um, would I buy the endorphin shift again? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. I hope the chapters work for you today. The chapters is very, very exciting down in the description. Onward and upward. All right. See beauty, work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.